Hi, thank you for joining me. My name's Amy and this is Amy's Stitches and Pages where I talk about cross stitch and books. Uh, before I get started today, I just wanted to give a little life update. Um, in the past week, my boyfriend and I broke up. We've been together for six years, so feeling a little bit heartbroken and I've been trying to distract myself by doing lots of cross stitch. So I've probably done more in the past uh, week or so than I usually would, but I guess that's a silver lining. Um, so this month I challenged myself to do the 24 hours of cross stitch March acrostic challenge, bit of a tongue twister. So I'm halfway through that and I thought I'd just take you through what I'm doing for each of the prompts. So the acrostic prompts are uh, letters and then you can pick a project that is related to that letter and then set your own goal to try and achieve for that. So the, the acrostic this month is Sanity in Stitches. So for S, I've gone for second page of my women reading uh, pattern and I've achieved that. So this is where I'm up to now. Uh, and this is the section that uh, completes the second page. So the first page was from here to about here and then this is the second page. So I had hoped to um, do a page a month um, so this is sort of catch up from February and uh, it took it did take me longer than I expected. I thought it would be about 900 stitches to finish off the page and it turned out to be 2000 um, and that's because I've done bits where I've come sort of out of the page um, but that takes me to a stitch total of 10,810 stitches, which is 8.72% of the pattern. So good progress. For A, uh, my goal is to do all of a colour for my Harebell Flower Fairy pattern. I haven't started this one yet. I'm uh, not super keen to stitch on that pattern. It's a paper pattern and all the colours are very similar. So I've put this in as a challenge to sort of see if I can get myself into working on it. Maybe I will enjoy it more. So hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have completed that one. N is a new start and that's to be determined. So I haven't picked out what I'm going to do for that yet. But I have some ideas. I is initial S, so I'm doing um, four different floral initials for one for me and each from, of my three friends for our 30th birthdays and the initial S was a start and then this is my progress so far. So this is 683 stitches which is 31.23%. So I've done the majority of the black, I just need to do a bit more around here and then that'll have um, green foliage and uh, a red rose on it as well. So uh, T is third page, so when I'm working on woman reading now I'm aiming to complete the third page but considering it's taken me this long just to complete the second page I'm not sure if that's actually going to be manageable by the end of the month. Um, if I was going to try and do it, it would be uh, 4,800 stitches to do a full page um, because it's 60 by 80 um, is a page of the pattern. So that's a lot of stitches. Uh, not sure that I'll do that and everything else, but I can try. Uh, y was a YouTube channel name, so I made this little... Uh, stitch with my YouTube channel name on, Amy Stitches and Pages, and I'd um, just use an online generator for the text. Uh, I did have to redo it because when I first stitch it, stitched it, I missed out a T, so it's just said stitch stitches. Yeah, it well, I I got all the way through the word without realizing, but obviously I couldn't put it out there. <laughs> as it was so I had to redo that but it didn't take very long um, so I'm not sure how many stitches that was in total 
uh, but that was just a fun little sort of one day project. There we Lip balance? Yes. Okay. Then um, I, initial E, uh, I haven't started this one yet, so I'm still working on the S. I'll do the E once I've finished the initial S. Uh, N was a novel related stitch. So I did this for World Book Day as a little bookmark um, slash to display on my bookshelves. Um, so it says just one more page and I made it from uh, combining motifs that were in this copy of the World of Cross Stitching magazine and this was the March edition. So they've done all these designs so that you could like do them together on a bag. So I've just picked out a couple of those and chose my own colours. And these colours are ones that I had from a pack of cheap floss that I got when I first started cross stitching before I'd ever heard of DMC. So I thought this 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 type of thing is just a good way of, of using those up. Uh, yeah. The next one is S and that's Spring Card Mini. So uh, I haven't started this one yet, but it's to complete this freebie that came in one of the magazines. So that's a cute little card. Um, so for the tiny stitch, um, I did a little burger on uh, an easel and uh, that was from a pattern from World of Cross Stitching, the April edition. So they had all these super cute little uh, food items with faces. That's so cute. So I did the uh, burger and I, I, I don't have that now because I gave it away as a gift. And did I say A, I, initial A? Oh goodness, I've done this all wrong. So I'm doing the A, initial A, the I. Oh goodness. Uh, T will be 30 minute stitch and I'm now realising that might be very optimistic to think that I can do a start to finish stitch in 30 minutes. So it might just be to do 30 minutes on a new project. I'm not sure. Uh, but, but C is the initial C. So this is a finish. Which way up does it go? This way. So this is the initial C. So this is the first one that I've finished and all the initials will have this same floral design and they're all in the same colours. So very, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Um, and I've got a couple of frames to try and see what it would look best in. I'm not sure whether to do it in a rectangular frame or a square frame. So I thought I would wait until I've done all of them and then see what would match all of them the best and do them all the same way. Uh, H is Herbal Fairy again. So I've put it down to do 500 stitches on that one, which would be quite a lot of progress if I did manage to do that. Uh, e is Easter Ducks. So this is a start and a finish. This was a little kit that I got in one of the old um, magazines um, when I went charity shopping and it's from the Cross Stitcher magazine from 1993 um, and this is how I've done it. So I just didn't do the back stitching around the ducks because um, I thought they looked all right as they were. I just think they're so cute. I sort of thought that this would double up as a 30 minute stitch. Um, I don't know how long other people would think that would take but it actually took me two hours so <laughs> uh, clearly I think I start stitch a lot faster than I actually do and yeah <laughs> um, but I think that's that's just such a cute little yeah and um, I can make that into a little card or something for Easter that's nice and then the last one S smaller fabric 
Um, I'm going to probably count this one for small fabric as well because this is 28 count and um, you did it over two and perhaps that's why it took me a little bit longer than I expected to work on it because I've not worked over two on anything before and the smallest count I've done previously is an 18 count. So uh, this sort of ticks that one off as well and it was um, it was alright once I got going with it but I definitely would have preferred to have stitched this on 14 count. <laughs> So that's my progress so far on the March acrostic and I'll be finishing up the rest of those prompts hopefully by the end of March. Um, I have got a couple of bits of haul to show you. So the first thing that I got was the fabric and floss for um, Lo and Behold by Long Dog Samplers. So I think in the last video I've been saying I didn't know what cat to do this on and I couldn't decide what colour to do it and I was worried about doing it all in one colour and not having enough floss um, but after stitching on the floral initials on 18 count and really enjoying that I decided that's what I wanted to do for this one as well um, because the sort of sampler style I didn't mind that it will look like crosses and be obviously a cross stitch um, because I think that's part of the appeal of the design so the 18 count seemed like a good choice and then when I was in a craft store in person I picked out some uh, DMC threads so this one is a DMC 311 and I'm going to do that as the main colour and then I've got DMZ3765 to do as like a secondary colour if I feel that I want to like pick out some other bits for contrast. And then because I like sparkle, I've got E825, which is the sparkly like metallic blue. And I've heard that this is quite difficult to stitch with, but I thought for a couple of little bits, it might just give it a bit of a pop. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see but I think the the sort of the three colours go together um, really nicely and they'll look really good on the um, white 18 count so that's that one the next bit of haul I got was my fabric and floss for the stitch goddess pattern so that's uh, this one by tiny modernist and the called for fabric is, um, I'm not sure what it is, but it's some kind of dyed fabric and it's not super available to me and I haven't tried a fabric like that before. So I'm playing it a bit safer and I've gone for the Spygart um, Cashel in this sort of pale blue, um, if you can see that colour there. Um, so this is 28 count and then I'll do this over two. So I feel better now that I've done my little ducks. Um, I have tried something on 28 count and um, it feels manageable. Um, and this isn't a super huge project so I feel like I can give it a go. And all the threads um, for this one have all arrived and it's all the call for DMC and the, just this little bag just brings me so much joy it's just so colorful uh i'm really happy um with that i think it's gonna look you know they're gonna look really bright and cheerful on that on that um fabric the only thing i haven't decided is what color i'm going to change her dress to uh because this pattern i picked this pattern inspired by a poem called the green lady and I want the dress to be green but I have quite a few different um, greens for my woman reading uh, project so I think what I'll probably do is stitch a bit on the fabric and then try some putting some different greens against it to see what looks best so um, I think this is what I want to start next. Maybe this will be one of my new starts for the prompts 
um, because I'm really keen to get stitching on that one. The next thing that I got was my first needle minder. So it's this one and it says bookworm. And then on the back, it's got a little owl. And this was from Etsy from uh, Peak Your Interest. So they had some really cute ones on there. And um, this is definitely saving me from, uh, I was previously putting my needle on my phone <laughs> to try not to lose it whenever I was changing floss and then I'd knock it off and have that panic of, oh my goodness, I'm gonna sit on the needle. So, um, stitch in safety now. The last thing that I've got was some floss and a button that I got from uh, Sheffield when I went there the other week and I've already lost the button. I, it's, I just got a single uh, button of a gold pair of scissors and it was in a little paper bag and I've put it somewhere safe. I think, I'm not sure, I can't find it, but I'll insert a clip that I took when I was buying it. And then I got some floss, just DMC, but I'd been to the cathedral and had really enjoyed looking at the stained glass windows. And then when I was in a craft shop, I saw this uh, E130, which is a sparkly multicolored one. And I thought that that would make a really nice stained glass window effect in a stitch. So I picked up some uh, 310 as well and I thought if I found the right pattern I could do the outlining in the black and then just fill it in all in the multicolour and that could look quite nice. So that's all of the stitchy things that I wanted to show you and um, like my previous video I thought I'd just end with a bit of book chat so if you're just here for the stitching that's fine you can go. Um, I haven't really read that much um, over the past couple of weeks um, so I think I'll leave my sort of thoughts on what I have been reading for my next video. Uh, I have one new book purchase which felt quite fitting and was the whole reason that I bought it. So it's this one. <laughs> Again, like dark blue cover, gold, floral, and embellishment front. Couldn't resist it. Was I solely bought this because of the cover. Um, so this is the embroidered book by Kate Hartfield. And it says, uh, 1768, two queens with a powerful secret will enchant the age. So it's sort of um, historical, like alternative, history i'm not quite sure what genre that is but it's um marie antoinette when she's sent to france it's her and her sister who is sent to uh naples to marry uh one of the emperors there and um when it says that when they were children they discovered a book of spells um that work with dark and unpredictable consequences uh so I think that sounds interesting. I recently watched the Marie Antoinette film with, is it Kristen Dunst? Kristen Dunst in it. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. It was, I hadn't realised that they'd done it like a modern rom-com sort of feel. So that was, that was good. I enjoyed watching that. So I, I guess that's sort of why I'm uh, particularly keen on on reading this one but it, even if I don't get round to reading it just yet it's nice to have on my shelf. So that's my book purchase. The other thing I wanted to talk about in books was the Women's Prize long list announcement and I haven't read any of the books that are on it um, before and I don't think I've read any books by any of the authors that are on the long list and I'm not going to go through all I think it's 16 of them um, but I thought I'd just tell you the three that piqued my interest the most and that I'm going to make a priority to uh, get to. So the first one is, I'm going to just read my notes. 
Um, Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Coppersmith. Um, so this is about two young Vietnamese women who go missing decades apart. Both are fearless, both are lost, and both will have their revenge. Yes. Uh, the next one is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozaki. And this one says, after the tragic death of his father, 14-year-old Benny O begins to hear voices. The voices belong to things in his house. When ignoring them doesn't work, Benny seeks refuge in the silence of a large public library. Anything to do with libraries or bookshops. And sold. Uh, which leads into The Sentence by Louise Eldrick, which is about a small independent bookstore in Minneapolis, which is haunted by the store's most annoying customer. Flora dies on All, Soul, All Souls Day, but simply won't leave the store. Uh, Tuki, who has landed a job there after years of incarceration, must solve the mystery of the haunting. So, bookstores, haunting, a mystery, that sounds great. So, there's 16 on the long list and nearly all of them sounded fairly interesting. These were my top three. I think if I have time and I'm able to get hold of a copy, then there are, I would try and to read more of them um, but I might wait for the shortlist to be announced so the shortlist will narrow it down to six books and that's announced on the 27th of April and then you've got some time to read it before the winner is announced on the 15th of June so I'm going to prioritize these three and then see if I can read any of them or any more of them before the winner is announced so that's everything for today uh thank you again for uh joining me to talk about cross stitch and reading and um thank you uh ever so much to anyone who had uh commented or subscribed on my last video uh it was quite nerve-wracking putting my first floss tube out there and, and really great to um know that i'm not just talking to the void uh, so if you've liked this video, uh, please consider giving it a like or uh, subscribing and I'll be back in about two weeks with my next one. Bye!